Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing. Today, I've got my steel stowed Birkenstocks on so I can talk to you about eco design. Now, what's eco design, you might ask? Well, unless you've been living in a cave next to this dude for the last couple of years, you probably heard about efforts in all industries about more sustainable, environmentally responsible designs. Planes, trains, buildings, automobiles. But what about can openers, soccer balls, shoes, conveyor systems, for example? How can I build an eco-friendly wine bottle opener? I know you're thinking, I'll just make it out of all the Pepsi cans that my grandpa collected instead of using no aluminum. Wrong. What you need is so much more than just applying different material to a single part file. You need a comprehensive system that allows you to credibly estimate, evaluate, compare, and track the environmental performance of products throughout their life cycle. Life cycle analysis from Sustainable Minds does just that. It includes the entire life cycle of a product from raw material to usage to transportation through to disposal. Incorporating all those decisions into an easy to understand report that allows users to make critical decisions quickly and easily and make multiple concepts and inform your design team so that you can make the right, most responsible decisions about your product before the part is even cut, molded, cast, or welded. Whew. All right, I've caught my breath. Does that sound difficult? Is that too green for you? Well, try this on for size. What if you were able to market your product in a way that attracts more business? What if you were able to back your claims of an environmentally conscious product through standardized and proven methods supported by those guys over there in the steel-toed Birkenstocks? Win new business? Now do I have your attention? I figured as much. So how's it done? First off, let's just build a killer wine bottle opener and inventor. Make a quick drawing out of it, export the parts list, and I'm done from the inventor side of things. Next, I'm going to log into Sustainable Minds and start setting up my analysis. The analysis tool allows me to define goals for the analysis so that up front I'm communicating what I'm trying to accomplish to the entire design team. Once my project is defined, now I can start building out my system bill of material. Now sustainable design is all set up to receive my bill material from Inventor, giving me a huge leg up on the building out of this analysis. A simple import and I'm good to go. Once the bill of material has been imported, I need to map my Inventor materials to the available materials within Sustainable Minds. Now, remember, Inventor is a tool that allows you to create accurate, down to the nats behind, digital prototypes. And the physical characters of, say, aluminum, well, it's the same whether it's new or recycled. And this is why we need to map the materials in sustainable mines so that we can get the most accurate picture of where the material is coming from and its impact on our goals. What you're seeing on the screen now is the key differentiator with Sustainable Mines life cycle assessment and some of the other tools available. You saw that I have the ability to determine power or water consumption. Since this product doesn't use anything except for your own strength, let's move on to determining end of life. Here, I'm able to determine which components can be recycled, which are incinerated or simply disposed of. Next, I'll move on to transportation and determine how the finished product is going to get to the stores and how the raw material got to my manufacturing plant. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference between material selection and life cycle analysis. With all my inputs done, I'm able to take a look at the results of the analysis. Sweet. A point zero one eight two a Kala score. What? You don't know what that is? <laughs> Alright, neither did I. Ocala is a life cycle assessment methodology that includes over 450 impact factors. And they include acidification, ecotoxicity, and other things that I have a hard time pronouncing. But just like other types of analysis, the results are really of little consequence if you don't compare them to another concept. And this time, let's try and use uh, an all-plastic design and see where that gets us. What, start over? <laughs> no, no, no. Copy the existing, make your material, transportation, and end-of-life changes, and hit results. It's that easy. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get a much clearer picture by comparing an all-plastic design to an aluminum design. Big savings here, and even some surprising results. I really had no idea that Grandpa was getting so much more than a nickel per can. He was giving back. Thanks, Papa G. <laughs> a quick peek to compare the recycled aluminum to the original and then the recycled to the plastic to get the best overall score. And from that, I'm able to make any appropriate adjustments to my product again before a single cut of Grandpa's recycled aluminum is even made. 
Now see, a tool like Sustainable Minds isn't going to necessarily make the design decisions for me. It's going to help inform you so that you can get to the point that you can make the best decision possible. All in a very, very short period of time. Now a quick personal comment about this technology. For those of you new to LCA, guys, I trained myself on this by literally just going through a couple uh, a couple design iterations. I uploaded a, a bomb that I exported out, out of Inventor and I started adding some materials and the more information that I added to this analysis, just like any other type of analysis, the better information I got so that I could make better design decisions downstream. This is a very, very impactful tool, something that I think is going to be on the forefront of everybody's minds while they're designing moving forward here in the near future. So I'm Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing. Don't forget to check out our manufacturing community at manufacturingcommunity.autodesk.com. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. We'll see you next time.